Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin Hurd, and welcome to uh, our presentation, uh, uh, Subdue the Enemy Without Fighting, the Art of Red vs. Blue. Um, so uh, I'll take you a little bit um, through the agenda for us today. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for joining here. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Uh, we'll do a quick uh, introduction. Uh, of myself, shouldn't take too long. Uh, a little bit about Newspire. We'll talk about the strategy and the plan of action for deploying uh, Red vs. Blue. What are the tools that we're going to use uh, in order to, de to defeat our adversaries? Uh, know your enemy. Uh, we're going to talk about knowing your enemy, uh, knowing who your adversaries are, uh, who's coming after uh, your, your company and your assets. Uh, Red vs. Blue methodology uh, is really going to talk around the um, around the methodology as a whole uh, and how we implement it here at Newspire. Uh, and then, last but not least, uh, the benefits. Um, how uh, you know how is it going to benefit your company? How it's going to benefit your customers uh, and, and provide a, a better service? And then we'll have a few a few minutes at the end here uh, for some questions. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Justin Hearn. I'm the Director of Security Intelligence and Analytics here at Newspire Networks. Uh, I've been in cybersecurity uh, networking for about 12 years now. Uh, here at Newspire, I lead a team of uh, a bunch of different uh, ex expertise. Uh, so we have intelligence experts, uh, which, which work on uh, collecting intelligence, looking at trends and things of that nature. Uh, threat hunters proactively going out and, th and hunting for threats inside of uh, our, our organization as well as our customers' organizations, um, and, and malware analysts. Uh, so they're actually kind of going through some of the malware, pulling out uh, samples and, and tactics and techniques that we can glean uh, from those samples. So before we get started, we, we have a, a quote here that we, we created on the team, and it, and it says, because one that has not defended against the sword cannot guarantee the strength of their shield. Uh, and, and basically, it's kind of the premise of red versus blue uh, as a whole. Uh, so, you know, as a as a, an MSSP, uh, if, if I have uh, if I build a castle. Uh, and I have no clue what my enemy uh, may bring to, to, to try to get into my castle. Maybe I put a moat there, uh, but they're going to bring a bunch of uh, bridges and it's useless. Um, you know, I need to make sure that I understand who my enemy is uh, and who's going to be attacking uh, my infrastructure so I know how to protect against it. Um, and so, you know, here as, as an MSSP, we're selling shields to our customers. So uh, it's up to us to make sure that we're testing those shields, we're testing those uh, defensive measures um, uh, that that we're applying to their network and to our own networks. Uh, and, and that's kind of what we're doing with Blood vs. Blue. We're actually, we're, we're testing our shields. So a lot of, you know, a common mistake made by security professionals and, and MSSPs is that, you know, we go out and we get all this technology um, and, and we think it's just gonna protect everything. Uh, and, and we're not doing our own testing on that technology. Uh, there's so many factors uh, that that play um, uh, the, with the tech, with the technology, what what are the capabilities of it? Uh, you know, what do we want it to do? Um, you know, how are detections escalated? Do we, we need to we need to to ask ourselves those questions. Uh, does the technology reduce the risk uh, that we have with inside of our company? Um, and this is kind of the reason, uh, one of the reasons that Newspire kind of takes a, a customer first approach. Uh, you got to understand. Uh, your adversaries, you got to understand what the risks are uh, of the, the different clients, uh, and you need to make sure that you're applying uh, the right measures uh, to defend against uh, things that may, may attack uh, those assets. And so I won't spend too much time here, uh, but uh, we want to talk a little bit about Newspire. Uh, we are an MSSP. Uh, we, we specialize in uh, you know, customer satisfaction, really understanding the customer and making them fanatically happy. Uh, and so we have a really good retention rate uh, by, by applying that methodology, uh, really understanding what the customer needs, not telling them what they need, um, uh, and, and filling those voids. So being an extension uh, of that, that cybersecurity team. 
And so if you need more information on Newspire, uh, you can visit our website at uh, newspire.com. And there's a ton of information about us and kind of what we do and the services we offer. Um, and some of the clients that, with, that we service here. And so uh, the, uh, our plan of action here. And so, you know, this this kind of talks about uh, the strategies and the different tools that we're going to use in order to um, stop adversaries before uh, they attack our business. Be ready uh, for those adversaries uh, before the, the event even happens. And so uh, proactive uh, defensive measures, uh, really being proactive about uh, what we're uh, what we're creating detection around uh, strategic threat intelligence. Uh, so understanding the threat landscape, understanding uh, our assets and our environment. Uh, threat hunting. Uh, so actually going out and threat hunting, looking at the data that we have uh, at all maturity levels. Um, uh, and in finding things that we won't find from normal detection. Uh, and what that does is that helps us fill gaps when it comes to red versus blue. We may discover something via threat hunting that we didn't detect. Uh, so now we know that, you know, here's a tactic that we didn't detect. So we can go back to the drawing board and say, you know, can we detect this through um, technical measures? And then finally, operational threat intelligence here, um, which is, is, is knowing uh, the different adversaries uh, that may be attacking. So specific adversaries, specific tactics and techniques. And so let's talk a little bit, oh, lost my place there. Let's talk a little about, a bit about knowing yourself and, and knowing your enemy. Um, so when we talk about, um, in knowing yourself and knowing your enemy, you really can't mention it without mentioning the MITRE attack framework. Um, uh, and, the, and the MITRE attack framework is actually a really good tool that helps us uh, understand the different tactics and techniques that an attacker may use uh, in order to attack our business. So what, what different tactics and techniques uh, are being used? And it kind of takes a different approach to just uh, you know, trying to detect an IPS signature or trying to detect a hash or an IP uh, to what are the methods that are being used in order to attack uh, our business. And so that, that all starts with knowing yourself. And so what I mean by knowing yourself is, you know, what industry are you in? Uh, you know, what industry are you in? Uh, what what are your critical assets? Uh, where may the attackers try to try to come in? You know, what are you most scared of? And so once we understand that, uh, we can understand our enemies. So we can understand what attackers want from us, for one. Uh, we can understand, you know, you know what, what are their motivations? Uh, we can also understand the, uh, the different tactics and techniques that they may employ uh, in, in, order to, uh, in order to execute a breach. And so uh, here at Newspire, we use the MITRE all, all the time. And so, you know, when we first came against it, and I'm sure this this happens with a uh, with with a lot of people, uh, you know, starting with MITRE, is is a it, it is a huge task. There's a ton of tactics and techniques. So, um, kind of where do you start? Uh, and so, what we did is is we went through, we identified all the different. Um, verticals that that we that we play in right all the different verticals that newspire protects uh, then we went out and found you know the different threat actors that that attack those verticals uh, from that we derived the, all the tactics and techniques that they use in order to um, uh, attack attack those different uh, different businesses and so uh, with that with that information we're able to create a heat map of, of where our most critical uh, risk are, right? So where, where are we most vulnerable at? And so that's where we start. You know, you start with the reds uh, and, and you work your way through. Uh, and, and we kind of employ this when it comes to red versus blue is that we take these ta these tactics and these different techniques and we we push them against our, our technology to make sure that we're protected against them. And if we're not, we figure out the different uh, uh, detection methods or, or that, that we can put in place, or maybe we're missing technology at that point. And that's when it's a good time uh, to go out and, and get that technology or increase that visibility.
So how does red versus blue work? And so uh, we have we have the red team here, right? And so here at Newspire, the red team is 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 my team. So the security, intelligence, and analytics team here at Newspire. And so um, we have a lab that's set up. Uh, we have uh, all our services in place uh, that are being monitored by the SOC that report to a customer that that they don't know. And so red team can actually be in, in, in different contexts. Uh, a red team and blue team can be combined to make purple team, but in our context, you know, red and blue uh, are reds doing the attacking, blues doing the monitoring, and purple is the the combination of us at the end. So it's our our post our, our post red team exercise um, activity that we do in, in order to figure out where our gaps are. And so we we have all these services set up. Uh, we have it being monitored by the SOC. Uh, we, we do uh, attacks based off of tactics and techniques that we're seeing out there. So maybe there's a particular piece of ransomware out there and, and that we've analyzed. Uh, we understand the different techniques that are used in that ransomware, uh, and we employ them on our uh, on our network, on our MDR service, on our EDR service, on the different technologies that we have. Um, out there that are protecting our customers. So, so we need to make sure that we, you know, we can really protect against these. And it goes beyond the, the technical aspects of it. You know, you know, can this device or, or can this software detect this attack? A lot of times the answer is yes. Uh, but uh, what we're really focusing on is do we have the proper procedures uh, to take care of that? Uh, do we have the proper processes uh, to handle that type of event? And so uh, what we do is we we simulate those events in an environment. Uh, at the end of that, we come together and we say, okay, what did we detect and what didn't we detect? Um, we figure out you know, what we didn't detect, we can go back and see if we can tune the SIM, uh, tune some of our other uh, detection methods. Uh, what we did detect, we can say, did we do a good job? Uh, did we use the right policies and procedures uh, in order to uh, remediate whatever that issue was? And so ultimately that brings us to, uh, you know, red versus blue, what are the benefits? What's the, the so what? Uh, you know, what are we trying to accomplish uh, by doing these exercises? Uh, and first and foremost, you know, we, we want to maintain a good security posture. Uh, we want to make sure that, that we're ready, uh, that, that we have the, the right technology in place. We're going to reduce the amount of false positives we have because we're going to tune our alerts and our detections around things that, that we need to look at. Um, uh, intelligent rule detection. So uh, the more that we see these different tactics and techniques or these different pieces of malware, we, we, we use uh, malware at some points and just put it in the environment and see how it reacts. Uh, we figure out where's the best way uh, to detect uh, that certain tactic or technique or that, that uh, particular uh, type of malware. Uh, so our rule may have caught what we needed to catch, but you know, we need to look back and say, well, where did we catch it in the kill chain? Do we want to catch it earlier? Did we catch it earlier on or we catch it you know, you know, way late? Um, so we can tune our alerts and our rules in order to uh, figure that out and to have uh, more intelligent detection uh, around some of the things that we have. Uh, more complete investigations. Um, and and I know I'm kind of working backwards here, but uh, more, more complete investigations around uh, whatever an event was. And so this this kind of this rolls into our customer's experience is as a analyst, if I understand an attack, if I've seen an attack before, uh, I'm going to be more thorough uh, in my investigation. I'm going to be more confident uh, and, and know exactly what I need to be looking at. So you know this this alert may have said, hey, you need to look in here, but I know that this type of attack and technique means I need to go and look over here as well because I've seen it before. Uh, it, it really brings uh, you know a faster response to threats. Uh, if we have better detection, as I mentioned before, getting it in the beginning of the kill chain as, as opposed to way late. And so we might be detecting it, but where are we detecting it? So we can get a faster response to those. We can pr properly prioritize um, the different events that we're getting in because we understand uh, what's going on. Uh, more knowledgeable staff. Uh, so people are going to be more knowledgeable to the different uh, 
tactics and techniques or, or what's happening within inside the environment because they've seen it. We've talked about it. We've created logs around it. We've created signatures about it. Um, so it's really getting everybody in that mindset uh, by doing these red versus blue uh, team exercises. Uh, ultimately, improving detection capabilities, uh, that's filling the gaps. So that's what that purple team is for uh, in our context is figuring out you know, where are gaps in detection, uh, where, uh, where can we get better, uh, are we missing technology that we need to uh, employ, or uh, is everything that we need uh, already there? Uh, so, so we're improving the detection capabilities. And then at the end of it is proactive protection measures. And so we don't talk about this enough in security is being proactive, uh, proactively pr protecting your environment. So not waiting till something happens, uh, testing uh, the, the different tools that you have at, at your disposal uh, to make sure that you have the proper visibility uh, into your network, uh, the proper uh, technology, um, in order to capture the different uh, tactics and techniques that are that are happening and the right people and the right processes and procedures. Uh, and so all that puts put together gives us a really good um, you know, approach to proactive security. And so uh, I, have, I have some time here for some questions. I figure we might have a few questions around uh, red versus blue. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll open the floor up to you guys, and I'll be happy to uh, to answer any questions. And I'm looking through here, and it looks like we do have uh, one question here, and it says, uh, "What's the mature, what maturity level do you think an organization uh, needs to be to start fully utilizing red versus blue?" And so I think the 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 end all result to that is any maturity level. There's never, a, there's never a bad time to start with red versus blue uh, teaming. You're always going to get something good out of it. There's, there's the, the thing with red versus blue um, is that the return is almost instantaneously. You can instantaneously feel more comfortable uh, since you've tested your shield against whatever it is that you want to test it against. Um, and, and, you know, you can start tuning your process and procedures right away. And I have a, another question here. It says, do you integrate with any SOAR platforms? Um, we don't as of yet. Um, we don't integrate with any SOAR platforms. Uh, that's, that's a really good point, but that, that definitely comes into those processes and procedures. So what happens is um, you figure out, you know, SOAR platform is only as good as the information that you put in it, right? So uh, by testing your methodologies and these, uh, with inside of red versus blue, you figure out you know, what does the SOAR platform need to do? What, what is the path that it needs to take uh, in order to properly remediate whatever this is? So that's a great question. Thank you. All right, and we, it looks like we have a, another one here. It says, um, what started making you use red versus blue as a method? Um, I think uh, really what, what triggered us uh, to really get into this is the start of uh, implementing the MITRE attack framework. Um, there's a lot of tools out there uh, that kind of allow you to start testing. And, and at the beginning of it, we were saying, hey, we just want to, you know, we want to create an alert. We want to cover, you know, all the uh, core things that we can as far as tactics and techniques. Uh, I think uh, Red Canary is one of the tools that we use. But, you know, as we started seeing the benefits of being able to test uh, the different detection methods or, or figure out like, hey, you know, we want to detect this technique, but we're not collecting that log source. So, you know, that that tr that trickles up. Right. We, we say you know, we don't have the visibility into that. Is it a tool? Is it a process? Is it something that we need to change in order to get that visibility? Uh, so really the the adoption of the MITRE attack framework uh, and the actual uh, configuration of it, really, uh, really figuring out. Uh, how it works kind of drove us to say this is really beneficial uh, to to create detection methods to test those detection methods and so as we were creating it with inside of SIA um, our security intelligence analytics team we said uh, you know 
let's get some more people involved. You know, what are our processes and procedures um, that are um, uh, that are being used once we detect these things? So if we're doing a good job detecting them, we want to make sure that you know the SOC uh, is has the proper procedures, the information in order to be able to remediate uh, whatever it is that they found. Thank you. Thank you for that one. And I think that's it for all the questions. Uh, I really appreciate your guys' time. Um, again, uh, you can find out more information about Newspire at newspire.com. Uh, if you come up with any more questions, uh, feel free to shoot them towards us, and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.